Hello everybody, Neil here from the Four Corners and welcome to the first of many back-to-back -back episode reviews since we're getting two episodes all the way until Friday for season 15. So this week is going to be pretty crazy. As usual, the format is the same. We go through pros, cons, and then finally a rating out of four. So let's get right into it. The story starts off with some explanation to how Wajira works. You have to put two amulets into the head in order to power Wajira, which is something we already knew, but this is clarifying that a little bit more since it wasn't too clear back then. We also get to know that the second amulet is called the Wave Amulet. Then the ninja make it to the Uncharted Island. I was looking forward to this a lot because they're going back to the island and it's cool to see returning characters. I like how the Hydra Bounty went under the rocks this time. When the Hydra Bounty comes up, visually it looks like it's almost as big as the island proportions wise. I know the Hydra Bounty is closer to us camera angle wise, but it still looks like the Hydra Bounty is huge compared to how the island is. Which is funny because when you actually compare it to LEGO sets, the vehicles tend to be as big as any structure sets that we get. It's like the LEGO sets that way. The ninja then convinced Chief Mimatis to give them the Storm Amulet. Zippy, the crazy jungle dragon, we see it a little bit, and I wish we got to see it a little bit more. As for the keepers, that's pretty much all as well. We don't get to see the keepers much as well. Uh, it's too bad we never got to see the giant war between the Merlopians and the Keepers. I was really looking forward to that and it looks like we never got that. Prince Kalmar, or King Kalmar, I should call him now, he then comes to the Hydra Bounty, he knows that the amulet is fake, then swims off to Ninjago City. That's where the next episode picks off. Then episode 10 starts off like the most typical Ninjago episode ever. They come in on the monastery with that classic Ninjago music that goes like this. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Knowing that Amulet is at the Explorers Club, the whole team, Misako, Rei, Wu, and Kai, they all go to the Explorers Club and have to solve a riddle in order to get the Amulet since they're all not members. I also found it really funny how Clutch said that he had documented images of the whole adventure to the island and then he showed a drawing that looked like a two-year-old. The comedy is very solid. The main explorers guys, they also say that they laugh in the face of danger and they said ha 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 or ho ho ho. That reminded me of the Lion King. I watched the Lion King live action movie recently, very late actually, and uh, they had the same joke. I wonder if that was a easter egg for that. But the explorers club people, they actually did stuff. They actually did laugh in the face of danger and they actually did fight. I really like that. The explorers club wasn't rendered as completely useless. This episode also ends in a cliffhanger with Wu and Kalmar fighting for the amulet and we don't know who got it in the end. Can't wait for episode 11 and 12 to answer that. And guess what? The most unexpected thing happened. Nia could talk to animals, sea creatures. She tames these whales at the end of the episode and they look very grand. That point brought us to the con side actually. I wish the whales had more texture to them. We've seen highly textured animals from season 8 and everything, and I wish DHX was able to put more effort into the whale designs. They look very good as it is, I'm just kind of nitpicking here for them to be better. As well as another con being very personal, I was wishing there would be a battle between the Keepers and the Merlopians, we did not get that. That's a con just personally, not it didn't need to be there. And for the story, if the keepers were more involved, then it wouldn't make sense for Nia to call the whales and activate the next step in her powers. So that's completely fine. And everything else as a whole was flawless. The way characters interacted with each other, the fight scenes, the comedy especially. I found myself laughing to a lot of jokes that were super hilarious. So I'm gonna give these episodes a 3.8 out of 4. Both of these will have a 3.0 out of 4. Mainly because of my personal reasons to see the keepers of the storm amulet and the people who are next to the wave amulet fighting as they're both very similar groups or organizations surrounded around the amulets. It would have been cool to see them as well as Zippy being shown at least once. We, we barely saw Zippy in that scene and I wish there was at least one interaction with the crazy jungle dragon. That is all for this video reviewing episode 9 and 10 of season 15. Thank you for watching and as usual, I'll probably see you in a episode review again tomorrow. Bye! -bye.